All right. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome again to Welcome Aboard, uh, resources for onboarding new uh, ABE staff. And so um, a little bit about me first. I am Lindsay Poost. I work with Atlas as the Numeracy and Special Projects Coordinator. Um, and so this uh, project that I'm going to be sharing uh, with you all today falls under that special projects category. So um, we have a lot to kind of go through. So I'm just going to jump right in. A couple of objectives for today, basically just sharing this, what this project is, what, what is, what are these onboarding tools that you are talking about? Uh, what supports are you developing? So um, talking about that initiative and where we're at in the process and then gathering your questions and feedback as well. So please feel free to put lots of stuff in the chat. We can save the chat and have a record of questions um, or comments, uh, but that is one of the other main objectives is to get your feedback on what you're seeing. We'll start with just a um, kind of a warm up question, but again, we want to know what's kind of already happening uh, in the field before um, sharing kind of what we're what we're developing to create more cohesion in adult education uh, regarding onboarding and supporting staff. So this question you see on the screen, what resources do you currently use to onboard new staff? Or you can think about it as transitioning current staff into new roles. So maybe not new to ABE, but uh, new to a role. Um, what resources do you currently use or have you experienced um, when transitioning or coming into a new position? So I'll give you a moment to think about that and type something in the chat. I see responses starting to come in. Awesome, observation time, mentoring, an orientation checklist, mm -hmm. teacher handbook, Self-guided PowerPoint describing the program. Okay, love it. Yeah, this this is great. Yes, the web trainings online. So there are your your you can keep you know responses coming in, but there are a lot of resources that already exist, right? And so one goal of this project is how can we try to create some um, cohesion between resources that already exist? And then what can we do to improve uh, this process of onboarding, uh, making resources available for everyone in the state to use if they choose? So um, I'm going to kind of talk through a lot of things. There will be times that I am asking for feedback or questions or, or whatnot. So, um, but a lot of this is this is this is what this is what's happening. So resources under development. You will see on the screen um, a circle with current program practices there because that really is the core. As you put in the uh, chat already, there's so many things already happening. Um, so we don't need to do a complete overhaul. It's more what can we do to again create that cohesion and that support. So things coming around what you are already doing. Um, we are developing uh, FAQs. So um, I'm going to show you what these are. Um, there are a couple notes on the side um, before I, I click on the link. Um, these documents do replace the ABE handbook. So if you're familiar with the ABE handbook that um, usually is given out uh, at ABE foundations for years, it's been in person just recently with the pandemic, it moved to um, an online option, um, the, the support webinars uh, with that Schoology course. So, but that handbook that we reference is going to go away. And then in place of that will be these FAQs. Um, but it does not replace the actual foundations course. So I have taken information uh, from the foundations course to develop the FAQs, but this is not a replacement of the course in and of itself. That is still um, an expectation that all new staff go through that because with that course, it's not just a list of questions and answers. There's assessments, um, reflection questions, et cetera. 
So uh, that's just kind of a disclaimer. On our Atlas website, if I were to go to the home, if I were to go to the home page and then go to resources, um, under resources, you have, you see all these resource libraries, Minnesota adult ed staff. Uh, that is where this particular resource will be housed. Um, the very first resource here that's featured is, is the, the document of the acronyms. So we all know there are so many acronyms uh, within adult education. So that is kind of front and center right away. Um, but then on the side, you'll see these FAQs as well. So uh, they are categorized by topic, um, again, mirroring what has been in the foundations course. But if I were to click on intro to adult education students, I will get a preview of these are the kinds of questions that you're going to find in this document. Who does Minnesota adult education serve? Who's eligible for classes? Why do individuals enroll in classes? And then there are more questions. When you open the resource, it's a Google Doc. And we made this a Google Doc so that it can be easily um, editable. So it'll be dynamic. Um, it won't go out of date um, because we'll be able to update things very quickly. So within each of these FAQs, um, there is a kind of table of contents at the top. Um, if I were to click on, this is this is the question that I want an answer to here. Um, everything is bookmarked. So then you can jump um, down the page to that. It didn't jump because it was the first question it was showing. But if I click on this, it will jump down to where is that question. So you don't have to scroll through the whole page. Um, you can just look for the question that you are um, interested in. The, there's also an outline on the side of the document, so you could jump around to the questions that way as well. Um, but this is information that, again, if, if a new staff member um, is needing to look something up, or if, you know, some of us who have been for tens of years and we're like, oh, I forgot the answer to that question, we're hoping that this is a, an easy place to kind of go and, and find some answers um, without having to go through the entire, go back through the entire course. Um, I'm gonna show another one here, introduction to the content standards. Um, so again, when clicking on that, you'll get a preview. These are the types of questions. Um, and then if I open uh, this resource, I will get a document, same format. This one is, pretty long because we have three sets of content standards, right? We have some general questions, but then there are some um, questions about the ACES TIF, CCRS, and then North Star. Um, but again, I can jump around to the page um, with some of the, uh, um, let me see if I can find one. Oh, I'm gonna go to the last one. So. Uh, there is the the menu or the outline on the side as well to jump around. Um, there are links within some of the descriptions that will send you to documents. So again, kind of a nice way to house. This is the answer, but then it might send you out to different links uh, to different sites or documents to, to have the full picture or to learn more. Um, one more that I want to show you that's up right now is... Uh, the policy and accountability one. So these are the three that are finished. There are more coming, um, but the policy and accountability here again are some examples of questions. Um, and this one I feel like for myself is uh, really helpful because sometimes I forget like, what are all the different kinds of measurable skill gains, et cetera. So um, opening the resource, uh, you will see, these um, questions. And in this specific document in particular, there are more references to the Minnesota Adult Ed site. So some places will say, click here for more information, and it will point you to a policy. Um, and so I think this one is 
again, maybe I'm just speaking for myself, but for this one in particular will be very helpful for me um, because I don't remember all of the different um, uh, language or limitations in the different policies. So um, I want to, yes, highlight one of these. So sometimes with the click here for more underneath, this, this is going to bring you to a list of policies. So underneath there is a, a, um, a list of these are the ones to then click on. So, and to help answer this question, what are contact hours? Here's information, click here for more, but then you can actually click on these specific policies when you go to this website. Um, so just showing you what that looks like this list of policies. So instead of thinking, which one should I go to? I gave a, a description of the different titles. So I could click on contact our policy and it will download a document uh, and you can then find out more information. So that is one resource that we are um, uh, developing and more will be coming. Um, <clears throat> more of the FAQ documents will be coming, but we have those three up on our Atlas website and ready to, to use. So I'm going to pause there. Any questions or comments about that particular resource that we are developing? And again, it does replace the ABE handbook that will be going away, um, but it's not replacing the foundation Schoology course because there's more to the Schoology course than just the FAQs. Yes, it is on the website and you can use it now. Those are um, ready to um, use. So I'm gonna actually go, so I have the Atlas website. So I would go under resources and then I'm gonna find the Minnesota, oops, I clicked on the wrong one. Minnesota Adult Ed um, Staff Library. And then I will find information about the AB Foundations course, but then also uh, the FAQs. And then that's where they're all ready and they should be view only documents. So if you do find typos as you're clicking or you find like I should be linking to another uh, resource within an answer, please let me know because I can easily update them. And that's kind of, that's what I love about this format that we chose um, is that it's dynamic. Okay, uh, you mentioned the foundation school G course, where's that found? It's yes, good question. That is different from the CCRS uh, foundation school G course. Um, the ABE foundations is, uh, I, I have information in my slides too. I have links and I'm sure, um, Maybe Patsy, if you could find the links to drop in the chat uh, to this, how to sign up for these specific courses. But I do have them in my slides, um, and that has been uploaded to um, Sked. Sked. Uh, and so then you'll be able to click on these different foundations courses. So Intro to ABE is kind of the ABE foundations, a big overview. And then there's a CCRS foundations as well. And that goes specifically into the content standards um, for math and ELA. Um, but then there's also the North Star Foundations and the ACES TIF Foundation. So there's a foundations course for each set of content standards. And there's also um, one just kind of an overview of adult education. So lots of courses, um, and I am going to reference them again. So hopefully that helps. But um, but yes, there are lots. I hope that answered your question. Um, and thank you for putting the, the link in the chat, specifically where you can sign up for that. Uh, the second resource that is under development um, is a manager module. So within that foundation Schoology course, there's nothing that's really specific to administrators, coordinators, managers. Um, and so that is uh, going to be added and it's going to be written during this, this current uh, fiscal year. So um, there is an, an advisory team made up of administrators from various programs throughout the state, and they've given some feedback initially on 
what should be in that module? Like, what do we want to know? What do we wish we would have had as training coming into an administrator role? Um, and there's kind of this initial list, but I am going to ask you for feedback now. Um, so I'm going to explain what this is, and then, um, then we will, uh, sorry, I just looked at the chat. Yes. Um, so I'm going to explain what this is, and then we'll put the link in the chat to this, this document. Um, and I'm seeing talk about the foundations webinars, those, um, for adult education, the, the ABE foundations, so many, see, I'm confusing myself. Um, there are webinars that kind of, that, that highlight content from the different sections uh, within that foundations course as the intro uh, to ABE. And those happen in the fall and they are on my last slide as well with links to register um, to those. And, um, but they happen October 18th, 25th and November 1st. They are, and those dates are in my slides, um, but they are webinars that kind of complement what content you are learning about in the foundations course for ABE um, to have a place to answer questions and kind of help bring that content alive. Uh, so that there's information on how to register for those if you are interested um, at the at the end. Um, so here there are three categories listed in this table, reporting, fiscal policies, duties, and programming. There are more topics that we want to include in this manager module, but we're starting with these three. So I'm gonna give you some time, and in a minute, you're gonna get a link to this document. I'm gonna give you some time to look at this, like five minutes, because this is a short session, uh, and comment. You should have commenting access, okay? So either, if you're not comfortable commenting in the document, please just put your comments in the Zoom chat. Um, or if you want to insert a comment, you can add a comment with the plus icon kind of by the, um, the, the font um, changes. Uh, there's a plus icon here, or you can go to insert and you can insert a comment uh, by, by selecting uh, insert uh, comment in that top menu. Um, so if I want to comment on something, I can highlight a piece. And if I have a question about it, I can highlight it. And then I can either press the plus sign or I can go to insert comment. And then I'll be able to type a comment and it will be saved. Okay. So I really am curious, what questions do you have about this list of topics that we want to include in this module and what's missing? What did what's not on our list in these categories? Please chat if you have any questions about what we're doing, but let's take five minutes to look at this document and make some comments.
I am loving seeing all of these comments. Thank you. You still have a few minutes. Um, I did get a question about who is the ABE Foundation's online course, course for teachers or students? That's a great question. It is for um, teachers. Um, it's for staff, teachers, administrators, support staff, um, so not students. Yes, I'm seeing lots of good things. I see Christine is responding to one of the comments as well. This is, I'm so glad that we have uh, everybody's eyes on this because it's definitely helping make sure we don't forget certain nuances. Take like another uh, one or two minutes, add any comments. And if the Google Doc, for whatever reason, is giving you trouble, please. Uh, Put your comments in the chat because we definitely want to hear them. Yes, I have uh, uploaded the slide presentation. I hope I did it successfully. Um, a PDF version of the slides with all these links. I uploaded it to my session in the SCED app. So I'm hoping it's there. Mm -hmm. Awesome. If there are uh, other comments you think of um, after leaving here, again, this document is linked in the, the PowerPoint slides. Um, so you can always come back and add something. Um, otherwise, wrap up whatever comment you're on, and then we will go back to Zoom. Um, I have another resource that I want to be sure to share with you before we end. These 45 minutes go fast. All right, if you can make your way back to Zoom so you can see my screen. And right on this slide, you see this is linked. So again, accessing the, the PDF later, you can click on this and add anything else you think of um, that we should be keeping in mind as we write that content. But I'm gonna show you uh, the third piece here that we want to kind of bring in um oh thank you for verifying that and that it is up um so uh training expectations this is one that um i think is my favorite only because i got to kind of you know play with some cool graphics but uh it is probably the more intense one of everything so thinking about training expectations by role in adult education. And so that is something that we are developing. Before I click on it and show you again, 
it is under development. So this isn't like a final, yes, this is exactly it, set in stone. This is what we are thinking about and the direction that we are heading. Um, now is the time to kind of ask questions and, and offer feedback on things that you're seeing. Um, and there will be other times as well, especially through uh, administrator module or webinars that we host throughout the year. I'm sure this project is going to be coming up in some of those webinars as well. So um, here is kind of our initial place for feedback. Um, this is our vision that on the Atlas website, there would be a page and the graphic will probably look different, but something like this. OK, this is just kind of for inspiration here. Um, that there are different roles that people hold. And if we're looking for what is a what is the expected path for professional development for each of these roles, um, this would be a place, again, thinking about how to create cohesive um, resources, a, a cohesive plan, this could be where everything would be housed. And then we might, you know, link out to other areas. So administrators, if we were to click on that, um, this, it would be like a calendar, right? And you can see that it spans 18 months. So this isn't something that we're thinking in the first two months on the job, you have to do all of these things. It's, you know, let, let's think about what do we want in the first 18 months in a position or in, in any role, okay? Um, so you'll see in months one to two, it, completing the ABE Foundations uh, Schoology course, and it's linked here. Um, and that would include the manager module, right? Specific to the administrators. Instructors who do the AB foundations would not have to do the manager module, but with the manager module, um, months three to six, so that's four months, um, thinking about, okay, let's do CCRS foundations, both the ELA and the math, um, because teachers um, are teaching both ELA and math, and so being able to support teachers in either area is important. Um, so completing both. Um, SID training, um, there is a numeracy training coming soon that is going to be available for everyone um, to take. Um, not, it's going to be, it's under development. So I can't say much other than it's going to be uh, about like the principles of teaching numeracy in any class, in any context, not just standalone math classes. So, um, but that's again suggestions and then month seven through nine okay aces foundations north star foundations um and then we're you know having culturally responsive teaching nothing is linked there yet because i i need to have specific resources to link and this is under construction um but this again is this is the direction we're heading where there would be this map of okay within 18 months this is a suggested um breakdown of how you could prioritize these different trainings um to make sure that we have all of the um, bases covered, right? You'll see on the bottom, mentorship, um, because that is a piece uh, that I will, that that is coming. Um, and so you can kind of see, there would be, uh, in, in my mind, this visual would be um, all of these different trainings happening, but then simultaneously, how does mentorship fit in so that I'm able to meet with someone and kind of talk to them about my learnings or ask my questions? Like, so I'm not just completing these foundations courses in a vacuum, but do I have someone else that I can talk to? And it's kind of scheduled, right? So that I have a uh, kind of a, a checkpoint. Um, and so that that is that is something coming soon. That's kind of part two of this project to really think about that. Um, and then over here, I have make six month PD plan with supervisors. So like at the end, in all of these different roles, um, and I'm showing administrator first, it's if I were to click here, there will be a list and this could change, this could have more, uh, there will be more links, but a list of okay, um, this, these might not be required in your program. Um, but maybe they are, uh, maybe they're applicable to your program. Maybe they're not applicable for everyone is what I'm trying to say. Sorry. Maybe not every single program needs to go through adult diploma because not every program has adult diploma, but other specialized training options that make sense for you and your role and your site kind of thing. So having kind of a list of things to think about, okay, now what do I want to do after I have that foundation? Um, and so this has um, th this. I, I clicked on the administrator one, and I went through this one more in depth. I'll show you a couple more, kind of more briefly. Um, but 
with all of these roles, our administrator advisory team has given input. And we've talked about this a couple different times. What should be required? What should be optional? What should be what should be expected? What should be optional? What and so that's kind of where this is coming from is is uh, getting input from people uh, in this role. Um, so if I go back to the home page, then again, I'm going to go through these ones very briefly. It's the same exact structure, um, but there would be some differences, right? So non-instructional support staff, if they're if 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 uh, individuals are not in the classroom, then the sets of content standards those those foundation courses don't really make sense for that role. Um, they're optional, but they don't make sense as a ex expectation. But there are different things that could be done. Um, for the instructional staff, you see um, some very similar to the administrator path, um, a couple more things that were included um, and not the manager module, right, with ABE foundations. Um, the uh, multiple roles, right? I'm everything, right? You'll notice with this, the, the timeline has changed to two years. Again, this is a suggested expectation of like, this is, this is the goal, but there's a longer period of time because you're doing more things. Um, so to kind of help with that. And, uh, and then the last thing, volunteers, huge part of our programs. Um, Literacy Minnesota, they are the experts in training volunteers. And so they are then directed to Literacy Minnesota's page for the core and targeted training. And volunteers are always uh, welcome to take any of the um, other trainings that Atlas provides um, and that other providers provide, but, uh, but we're directing them to Literacy Minnesota for, um, for training. Um, I'm just looking at the chat. Yes, I like it. I'm glad this seems helpful, comprehensive, reasonable time frame. Yeah. And and that's the that's the goal. So again, if you have um any any other comments? I'm just seeing if there's any questions. Uh, any other comments about this specific piece? Please let us know. This is something that we are anticipating rolling out next year. So where this would be, okay, here's the expectation. Use this plan when coaching your staff, right? Let's make sure everybody's gone through this foundations course. Make sure everybody's gone through this foundations course or access this um, um SID training or, or what, what not, whatever it might be, this uh, fiscal year 24, that's when we are planning on this um, really being put in place. So having a little time to kind of get used to it and again, keep gathering feedback about the process. Whew, that one was the most meaty one and we are almost done with our time, but not yet. There's more. Um, so the last piece coming around uh, the current program practices, um, observation and mentoring. And I know people I keep saying that's so helpful. We're already doing that, which is great because we know it's already happening. Um, and but we want to make sure that uh, everyone has access to it because it's it's hard. It can be hard uh, depending on program size or um if you if your consortium is very spread out, right, and so you're not directly working with with stat, with your coworkers every day, um, how does it work in that setting as well? So, really thinking about this observation and mentoring piece and what resources we can provide to the field to help that process and to facilitate that. There's going to be a working group convening um, in the spring to really get our minds around that. What would that look like in different settings? And so that is part two of this um, process and it is coming, right? So I don't have anything specific other than kind of you saw in that visual, I, I would love to see um, specific checkpoints kind of match up with the suggested timeline for completing the different trainings. Um, but as far as anything more specific than that, we will be getting uh, a group of people together to kind of put our heads around that. So um, those are the different pieces that are under development. 
I am going to give you five minutes. I have five minutes to give you. Yes. Okay. This is great. So not seven, but I have five. Um, yes. And I would, um, I will say Astrid and Patsy can step in here. Um, Christine, in answer to your question, I would say yes, that every staff, if, you know, existing staff looking at this, have you missed any pieces? go back and do those pieces. That would be the expectation as well. Um, so if I misspoke, let me know. But we would love to kind of, um, oh gosh, I'm losing my words. Maybe I need more coffee. Uh, we want to create really this solid foundation that all of our teachers um, and administrators and coordinators and support staff, like that everybody has this base knowledge because it's only going to benefit our students, right? So that's really why we're all here. Um, so if you have a QR code and you like doing it that way, awesome. You can use that QR code on the screen. Um, otherwise you can click on the link that's in the chat and the Padlet, these are just more questions. So you may have given me some of this information, but it, but there are more questions again, because one of the main objectives is gathering your feedback and your input. So I have a couple questions about current practices on here. Just curiosity, because we're going to start getting our mind around what does that observation and mentoring piece look like? Um, what, you know, and the timeline, just thinking like, should we be tweaking that timeline? So we want, we want your feedback on that. So I have a couple questions there. If there are resources that you are using with your staff or that your supervisor has used with you that you can share with us, please, if you have a gold nugget out there, we want, <laughs> we, we don't want to reinvent the wheel. Um, and then, yeah, any other comments you have. So I'll give you a couple minutes. If you didn't already put your comment in the chat, if there's anything else that you uh, want to offer on this Padlet, I will be quiet for a couple minutes before we wrap up with some announcements. And Karen, I am going to defer to someone else. Maybe Astrid's already. I'm taken. working on a response. To Perfect. That. That's what I thought. Okay, <laughs> great. I am going to request if you would be willing to uh, sign your name, you can uh, edit your comment by uh, going up to the right hand corner. There should be an edit or maybe it's in the three dot menu. Sign your name because for some of these, I want to we want to be able to say, oh, OK, that's how it's working in a program of this size. That's how it's working in a program of this size or this context, because it will help no um we don't want to give expectations that don't work in all settings so i would love if you could sign your name so that we can match the content context with what you're doing
Mm. I love these comments. Thank you. And I'm zeroed in right now on the digital inclusion coordinator one. Um, definitely something to think about. Thank you. Uh, you have access to this link, right? In the slides, you can keep this open on your screen. Actually, that would be great. You can keep this tab open on your screen, the whole conference. And then when you think of something, you can go and put it in here. Um, so you don't have to be done interacting with this in three minutes. Um, you can continue to add your comments, your questions, and resources that you're already aware of or that you use um, that we should know about. I have just a couple of announcements that I want to um, go over. So if you could make your way back to Zoom, I know this is like a, a flash of a presentation, but um, again, you have the link. So please just keep it open as things come to you, add it in there. Um, but a couple of things I want to point out. On this slide uh, for resources, I have linked all of the foundations courses um, and the newly, I think it's newly uh, released North Star Foundations course, I have linked as well. Um, that goes to Literacy Minnesota's page um, where you can sign up for that. So all the different foundations courses and I, um, I want to just highlight the ABE Foundations webinar series. Um, like I said earlier, October 18th and 25th, and then November 1st, those are Tuesdays. They're, it's in the afternoon. I think it's 1.30 to 3. Don't quote me on it. The link will bring you right to where you can sign up for that. Um, and then Math Institute is something that I want to highlight as well. So even if you're not in the classroom, right, if you're a program leader, you are strongly encouraged to attend. Has anybody in here, you can put in the chat, who has heard of Dan Meyer? I'm just curious, in the chat. Yes, no. Yes. One yes. Anybody else? No. Okay, mixed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mi mixed, mixed group. But Dan Meyer is like, um, like uh think of a popular celebrity on tv and dan meyer is that in the math world okay so you can see on the screen his um <laughs> you can see on the screen some of his uh bio um but we have been able to secure him as a speaker which is a really big deal uh for this coming year uh so september 23rd it's a friday it's a virtual event so to, again, trying to create access for everybody to be able to attend that that can. Um, program leaders, managers, coordinators, lead teachers, you're also encouraged to attend. He's really going to be talking about um, contextualizing math and how math is relevant to everyday life, like why we should care and why, like math, his uh, titles are humans need math and math needs humans. Um, and uh, math is power, not punishment. But really talking about the how is math applicable to everyday life, not just something in a textbook? And so um, everyone's encouraged to attend from 9 to 12. He is speaking a keynote and a workshop. And then after lunch, there will be a session specifically designed for program leaders to kind of um, offer kind of like a coffee break to offer feedback on what numeracy instruction is happening in my program, um, what challenges am I facing in implementing that, what successes am I having, uh, gathering feedback on uh, what resources and supports are needed to support teachers who are teaching math. And it's not just math standalone classes, it's embedding numeracy into our English classes as well, right? So um, huge plug. I know not everybody can take Friday off, but if you are at all able to encourage your staff to attend um, or attend yourself, that would be awesome. And his keynote and workshop, he has agreed that we can record them. Um, we will just password protect them because uh, they cannot be made available to the public, um, but we will be able to um, record them, but you will not get the same experience if you're not there in person. So in person, right? Because um, the workshop, you can only do so much. And that that uh, concurrent session um, 
won't be the same uh, if you're not able to attend. So I really strongly encourage you to prioritize this. And um, that's my shout out. I'm the numeracy coordinator and I absolutely love math. So I also, you know, had to spend some time plugging this. Um, but that's what I have. If you have questions, comments, things you want to add, or you can't find the, the PowerPoint slides, please email me and I will respond. Thank you very much.